Let's pray. Holy Father, Lord, thank you again for another opportunity to represent our constituents tonight, Lord. We're thankful for the holiday season. We're mm -hmm. anxious for the new year, Lord. We just ask that you provide protection on each one of those families and individuals that are represented here tonight uh, as we move forward into 2014. Be with the discussion and the decisions that we make tonight, Lord. May it be pleasing to you and honor our constituents. I ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, first item be approved minutes to last meet. So moved. Second. I got any questions on the man. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, be planning. We're sure hope you're all doing well this evening. Just to have a couple of items for your consideration tonight. Of course, the first is the subdivision lot inventory that we provide to you on a monthly basis. Uh, I just call your attention to the, I guess that'd be the back of the second page. You notice that the uh, of total available lots again continues to decline. Uh, we're down to 926. Of course, it's just on a corporate county area. Compared to this time last year with 1,078, just kind of looking at historical trends, that number has con consistently gone down pretty much every month over the last year or so. So we are seeing uh, more and more development. Uh, the subdivision plats, I know that there are about two or three that have not been recorded on that very last page that I uh, just signed uh, the other day, which I'm sure are going to register of deeds office. So the total number of lots on that list is probably going to go down. So you'll probably see uh, a little uptick maybe uh, in the next month or two of this available lots just because there's some more going on to the inventory. But uh, that's pretty much all I've got to report on that. If there's no questions, I'll just go ahead and go into the uh, rezoning report. We just have one application for your consideration next week. It's a piece of property located along uh, Highway 96 Franklin Road. Uh, it's a piece of property that's located at 9522. The applicants have purchased the property. It's about 23 acres. It's zoned residential, medium density, RM. And they plan to live on the property. They've probably already moved in at this point. They were doing a lot of work to the property before they moved in. I think they pretty much got done with that. It's pretty much an existing horse uh, farm now. They want to use a lot of the area for their horses. They've received permission to build a new barn on the property, kind of toward the back uh, of the property. Uh, at some point, they would like to also have weddings, possibly, at the property. Uh, now, if they do decide to do that, uh, they would have to meet the codes and the zoning ordinance and those kind of things for parking and, and uh, uh, the, of course, the applicable building, ap applicable building codes uh, for that structure, should they ever decide to do that. But essentially what they're asking for is a down zone from the RM to agricultural residential. Uh, this property was originally zoned R15 under the previous resolution. Uh, there was a portion of the property kind of toward the back that was zoned for retail and wholesale trade. Uh, when we rezoned the county back in 2013, we just made the whole tract uh, RM for residential use. That business that was approved there hadn't been in existence for quite some time. And the property owner since sold it to the, the current owners. So that's pretty much the only report that I've got uh, as far as rezonings go. There was an application, uh, you'll notice on your front page, that was deferred at the Planning Commission that will be going back uh, for some property along Crescent Road, uh, provided uh, it gets recommended <coughs> one way or the other at Monday's meeting. I imagine it'll, you'll see that next month. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Anybody got any questions? Motion to approve, there's no question. Second. Second. Motion made and second to approve planning report. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, building code. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Hey, David. <coughs> The Building Codes Department report for December was a total of 132 permits was issued. Fees taken in for plans review was $700. Plumbing, um, I'm sorry, uh, building permit fees was $33,764. Plumbing permits was 4160 
in gas for 1,040 for 39,664 taken in. Hey, Dan, on, that, on that commercial building, where, where, where's that located at? Uh, and that, that was uh, Dollar General on Shelbyville Highway. Oh, okay. The back of the report shows our totals for the year. Uh, December, we issued 29 single families compared to 31 single families last year. Our total was 132 building permits. Last year's total for December was 113. Our annual totals for single family dwellings, 556 houses. That's uh, up 43 from last year on single family and 2,397 total permits is up 90 permits from last year's um, yearly total. Um, we had also uh, the fourth row down from the top there is uh, the mobile home permits. We actually had 24 more mobile homes than we did last year also. We had 40, total of 40 mobile homes this year. So, um, our numbers are coming up pretty steady on, on the year. Next report is our property standard inspections. We performed 75 inspections in December for property maintenance, BZA and sign with 30, new cases for December 10, closed cases was 26. Our totals for the year we performed 2,619 inspections in property standards. And we go back up to liens released and liens placed. Uh, we released 105 liens this year. That's great news because we're getting our money back on our uh, mowing of our grasses and taking care of our properties that we did last year and this year. Uh, total liens placed this year was 33, so that's that's down some. Uh, looks looks a lot better on abandoned properties and things. Our total inspections or sign pickups in the county was 712, and our cases for the year was 426 new, 574 closed. Next report is the development tax collection. Building Coast Department took in $78,750. The Planning Department took in $44,250 for a total of $123,000. Uh, far right corner is our total collected, $2,109,750. And that's from July, of course, our De development tax collection starts in July, so it's half year over on those collections. Our total for December, uh, 123, compared to uh, last December's revenue taken in was 114,000. And that's my code report, Mr. Chairman. Anybody got any questions? Our um, code adoptions are still uh, on track for uh, May the 1st. We continue to have uh, education programs to the builders and home builders. Uh, we have a class schedule for next Tuesday at 1130, <coughs> and it's going to be a certified um, rated uh, person that will give the class on the um, leak detection blower door test of the envelope of the house, so on how that works and everything. And uh, that class is open to the public, open to home builders, anyone that would like to come. Um, that, that's open um, part of our 
updated code. Describe that for me again. Is that where they seal the house up? And that's correct. Okay. He will go through the procedures that's going to be done and what type of certifications on the third party uh, that's going to be required okay. for that approval. Okay. And so that's just going to be a good one. And um, I don't have any other information. If anybody, you know, tonight we was just, if anybody has any question about the adoption or anything, anything further on it? Going, going great. What kind of feedback are you getting from these meetings that you're having? Uh, they're very good. They're, people are interested. People are more um, adaptable to, to building codes as they used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are getting involved in the uh, process of adoptions and things. So uh, it's it's going good. And then too, for your contractors, they're. They're probably doing work in other communities where they're already having to do some of these things. Exactly. So. Some of them are already familiar and already uh, being able to uh, abide by the new code in other jurisdictions. Are you need a motion for this committee to go to? To go on to a county commission? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, if this committee is satisfied with what we've got, you know, we could go ahead and send it to commission uh, for April's approval. Uh, March will be our 90 days that we had to uh, submit all of the adopted codes to the county clerk's office, and they're available in the clerk's office and at our office uh, for public view. Uh, after that 90 days of March, uh, the commission could vote on it. So that would be in April. Yeah. So if you want to send it to if April's that's the case, committee. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. We approve the resolution that, that David has presented us on the adoption of codes. Yes, sir. Second. To be sent to the commission for the April. For the April, yeah, April, April agenda. Whatever the 90 days of the. Everybody okay? I understand. We'll go. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Solid waste, landfill, and solid waste. Good evening. How are y'all? Good evening. How are you doing, man? Start with the landfill reports. You can see on the cover sheet the revenues are a little bit down this time of year. That's normally what happens. Construction slows down, and we're mainly only do construction in the landfill or dispose of construction items. So that revenue has gone down just a little bit. In the next page, we still have not had an actual inspection. We have had a T dot or a, a T deck official out there. Alan Spear was out there when we was doing the monitoring of the wells. So that it's his trip report. It's that next page. And then behind that is the financial assurance that we need to talk about. It's not actually part of the report. You want to go on into that? Yeah, we'll hear. Financial assurance is what the county agrees with the state in lieu of a bond. And as you can see, ours is actually going down by quite a bit. So this would be an amendment to our uh, financial assurance for our landfill with agreement with the state is what this is for. This is something that we've had for a number of years, is that yes, correct? Sir. Every, we have to do this every year. Right. And it's a decline in balance, but they, it's adjustable and it's it's ready to be adjusted. Right. So that'll need to go on through the county commission as well. I'd say okay. it would. That's because that's dollars there. I guess the reason that it, it, it's going down is because our liability is going down as far as on the landfill. Is that correct? Right. The, the, as the landfill ages, the chances of things happening are getting less and less. So that that money that they set aside for that would be less right. as well. And, the st and actually the state is the one that's actually dictating how much the, the liability is. Is that correct? That's correct. Before we go to the committee, we need to do that. Yeah, I'll make, make a motion to approve the second agreement. Approving forward the budget. Do you go to the budget first, Mayor? Yes. Yeah. 
Well, I'm I'm budget, right everybody there. understand. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any more questions on the landfill? Anybody got any more questions on the landfill? <coughs> before we move on forward. Let's talk about let's talk about the convenience centers a little bit. Then the, this has been our busiest time. Normally around Christmas is when we get the most busy. Uh, we've got 20 trash compactors in 14 convenience centers, and the Saturday and Sunday after Christmas, all 20 of them went at least once. There's three trash compactors at Weekly Lane. Those three went five times collectively. Sand Hill has three. They went. Or it has two, they went three times. Amable has one and it went twice. And the reason I mentioned those three, that's in the north end of the county. And that north end of the county, those three convenience centers represent 47% of what we do out of those three. Uh, Amable, we're on track to put another trash compactor in there. But the reason I bring all that up is last year, two years ago, Rutherford County Solid Waste disposed of 53,000 tons. Of trash. Two years ago, we disposed of no 153 is, is 30 35,000 tons, and it went to 38,000 tons. And this past year, we disposed of 47,000 tons. So we're talking about a population increase that's coming. It's showing up in the trash already. So we need to look really hard and really closely at what we're going to do in the future. And part of that solution needs to be a heavy-handed recycle approach. Now that 47,000 tons of stuff that we dumped, 5,000 of it was recycled. So the rest of it was garbage. Well, dumped as garbage. You know, we still need to, to educate, train our public to get ready because Middle Point's going to close supposedly in 15 years, 2028. That's at current intake. As the county population increases, that closure date is going to get closer and closer. And by that time, we need to have this county, the residents and the commercial businesses, in the habit of recycling. Because we're going to ship trash somewhere. We're not going to dump it here. So we need to be shipping garbage, not recycled. So the deputy mayor and I are working on some plans. We're going to present one before long with the school board to try to get their program going a little bit better. Uh, but right now, we're running about... 12 to 14 percent, depending on how you want to figure it, 12 to 14 percent recycle rate. We should be at 25 plus. And when you look at Rutherford County as a whole, we are. City of Merceboro disposed of 32,000 tons of brush but this past year. They had a little over, a little over that in garbage. So you hear a lot of these California cities talking about zero rate waste. City of Merceboro is almost there just by that mulch facility. There's not a mandated percentage that a jurisdiction has to be at for the state. Is There's it? a 25 percent reduction. There is a 25 percent right. mandate, and that falls on the county. The cities don't have to participate. So if the cities choose not to participate, then the county has to to take care of it. Yeah. See, in the city, in the Rutherford County, the city of Mercer is the only one that deals with their own trash. The county's dealing with everybody else's. Yeah, so we reach out to Smyrna and ask them what they, how, how they feel about maybe getting on land. Smyrna, Smyrna and Laverne both, we've had some real minor conversations to kind of leading up what you're talking about, but nothing decided. Both of which had some pretty healthy tax increases last year or so to cover some expenses they already had. Uh, but they did not include any trash disposal in those. And in our discussions, they were looking to see how they could do it. And I said, well, you're going to have to have another tax increase to do that. You know, so that's that's not something they're willing to do at this time. And I, I can understand that. I mean, with 47% of the trash coming out of three different uh, convenience, centers. convenience centers on the north end, that's that's saying a lot right there. Mm -hmm. That's that's half. And so it's something that... that the population down there. It yeah. is. But something that, that I mentioned to my drivers, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think I'm wrong, but if you look at how the solid waste department is funded, we get a host fee from Middle Point Landfill, which is $1.20 a ton for everything that comes outside of the county. 
which is running right around $800,000 a year by now. It used to be higher than that, their levels are down. And then we get a percentage of the sales tax dollars outside of the city limits, was somewhere around 1.2 million. When you look at those people on the north end of the county, how many of them buy anything outside the city limits of Smyrna and Laverne? Probably not very many. Almaville, you got the little market there close, and we don't have a lot of businesses outside the city, but but that's where our revenue comes from. But most of our trash is coming from city residents that purchase within the city. I live in the county, but I buy my groceries in the city limits of Murfreesboro. There's not really a big grocery store like that out in the county. So, you know, our, our funding structure is, is has been working, but I don't know if that's the proper way to fund it. That's kind of one of the reasons I'm on David's report. I asked where that commercial building was at because I'm I'm glad to see a commercial business come in in Rutherford County for the sales tax revenue mm -hmm. instead of going to a municipality. Right. Well, we've got some big steps that we've got to look at, and, and it's not going to be easy decisions, but we need to think about them long and hard, and not real long because we've got roughly 10 years to make some decisions because we've got to have things in place. We're not going to be able to flip a switch tomorrow and say, you're recycling now. I just don't think that's going to work. It'll take two years to get it on the ground. I, it'll be longer than that. Yeah. Cause it, I it's, mean, we've done the school for two or three years, and that's still having a hard time getting off right. the ground. I can imagine the county plan yeah. would. Mm -hmm. But uh, what the deputy mayor and I are looking at is we've got to get the county, the, the county government doing it first. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, that's a, the school systems about. and the county buildings and everything else. And then once the county government is doing it, and then we can go toward the residents. But it's really not fair to ask the residents mm -hmm. to do it if we're not doing it ourselves yet. I agree. You know, so that, and it's a culture change. Nobody likes change. So that's that's the big thing is just changing our culture. Have you thought about, too, reaching out to the large employers? Because I'm thinking if people do it in their workplace, it's kind of like the kids. If they're doing it at school, then they're going to think about it when they go home. Mm -hmm. I'm worrying about what any of the... Um, some of the large employers really do and do well. Right. Uh, Nissan is doing real well with theirs. Uh, there's several other large employers here in the county that do a good job with it. Uh, so, you know, if you have to do it at work, of course, if that's part of your job, then that's the way you're going to do your job. Mm -hmm. But you don't necessarily do the same thing at home that you do at work. Mm -hmm. You know, so what we've got to do is educate and, and we've got to show by example. This is what we do and this is how we do it. Uh, at some point, we're going to be looking at some funding mechanism for solid waste other than what we have. And I think once we get there, we're going to have to look at some type of pay-as-you-throw type situation. We're a long ways off from that one, but that, that's a possibility. I mean, we've, we've been having a lot of trouble with vehicles because of the weather, partly. And then we've got some issues with some of the newer trucks that we're battling through. Mac and Nashville is doing everything they can, uh, trying to deal with their corporate and get some stuff covered that they don't want to cover under warranty. But uh, we've had we bought three 2012 trucks in two different budget years, and three of them's been in the shop for almost a month. Mm -hmm. We got them mm -hmm. today's the, today is the first day we've had all four of them on the street at the same time in two months. And these are the new ones. Mm -hmm. But other than that, everything's going really well. So moved. Second. Second. Anybody got any more questions you want to ask Mike? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Well, the highway problem didn't have no report this month because all they had was bid on Lubbock. And uh, well, that's all the reports. Anybody got anything else you want to bring up? Bring it up. If not, I'll move with John. Okay.